live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Pass interference is a highly controversial penalty. Since it is a spot foul, a game can flip on a dime simply because a team moves up in field position after the call. Sometimes it's blatantly obvious, while sometimes it's a toss-up. And sometimes, the referees just blatantly get it wrong, and it winds up costing a team the game. Folks, we've got a case to the latter here. In a 1972 game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions, the referees got a call at the end of the game horribly wrong, and it ended up deciding the game. This is the story of what might be the worst call of the 1972 season. First, we need some context going into this game. It's October 8th, 1972, and the Detroit Lions are traveling to Atlanta to take on the Falcons in this pretty big early season contest. After three weeks, the Falcons and Lions find themselves as two of the best teams in football. Detroit sits at 2-1, tied with the Green Bay Packers for the lead in the NFC Central. Meanwhile, Atlanta sits at 2-1, Tied with the San Francisco 49ers for the lead in the NFC West, as they look to make it to the postseason for the first time in franchise history. It should be noted that the Falcons should be 3-0 at this point, but they blew a fourth quarter lead to the New England Patriots in Week 2, where they led 20-7 in the fourth, but lost 21-20, in a game which included Falcons kicker Bill Bell missing the game-winning field goal from 10 yards out with 30 seconds left. Fortunately, this would be the last time that the Falcons would ever blow a seemingly impossible lead against the Patriots. As for this game, Atlanta struggled to get much of anything going offensively at first. The Falcons could only muster up three points in the first half, while the Lions led 13-3 after an eight-yard touchdown run by Steve Owens. And after three quarters, the Lions were still looking in command of this game, as following an Atlanta touchdown, on the very first play of the ensuing drive, Detroit scored on an 82-yard touchdown pass by Greg Landry to Ron Jesse. Entering the fourth quarter, the Lions held on to a 20-10 lead. When the fourth quarter hit, though, the Falcons finally started to get something going. A two-yard touchdown pass by Bob Barry to Art Malone cut the deficit to three points. Then the Falcons got the break they needed, because after a defensive stop on the next series, Willie Bellin had a beautiful 22-yard return to set the Falcons up nicely on their next drive. Bellin was having a rough year up until that point, averaging a mere 4.5 yards per return, and even having negative return yardage against the Patriots in Week 2. But this return right here was a good return to form for the man who finished inside the top 10 in punt return yards the previous year in 1971. A 32-yard field goal by Bill Bell tied the game at 20 apiece. Just like that, the Falcons had erased a 10-point fourth quarter deficit. And on the very next play from scrimmage, Landry got intercepted by Clarence Ellis. That name will become very important later in our story, but for now, just know that the Lions were seemingly imploding at the seams. With the game tied, Atlanta lined up for a 12-yard field goal and Bill Bell looking to redeem himself in a high-pressure situation after that debacle two weeks ago against the Patriots, drills it. For the first time all game, the Falcons are leading. As things stand, the Falcons are going to go to 3-1 for the first time ever. It would be their best four-game start in franchise history, and the first time that they'd ever been above 500 after four games. All the Falcons have to do is get a stop, and they're going to pull off a stunning come-from-behind victory. Unfortunately, Detroit gets to midfield pretty easily, as on the very first play from scrimmage, Altie Taylor gets a 31-yard gain to set the Lions up in Atlanta territory. Taylor and Jesse were the only two players to catch a pass for Detroit all game. Landry finished this one 5-for-17 with three picks and a 41.9 passer rating. Detroit's passing game was seemingly anemic all day, but it came up big here. There's just 47 seconds left in this game. All the Falcons need is a stop, and the game is over. Instead, what happens next is the highly controversial pass interference penalty. Ron Jesse goes down while trying to get the football, but the referees rule that Clarence Sellers interfered with Jesse. First down for the Lions at the three-yard line. It's an absolute backbreaker of a penalty for Atlanta, especially since back in 1972, when games did not go into overtime, barring anything crazy, the best case scenario for the Falcons at this point was a hard-earned tie. What made this penalty all the more backbreaking is that there was no contact. This should not have been pass interference in the slightest bit. I've watched this play in real time and in slow motion a lot, and not once can I see any contact between Ellis and Jesse. I'm not even sure Ellis lays a finger on him, let alone draws enough contact to warrant a pass interference penalty. Obviously, pass interference is not reviewable, 
nor did they have instant replay back in 1972. So the call on the field by the referee was final. Just like that, the field flipped 35 yards. And on the very next play, with 34 seconds left, Steve Owens punched it in for his second touchdown of the game. Ball game. Lions win 26-23. Afterwards, as you can probably imagine, the Falcons were livid. Safety Ray Brown said that it was a bad call. Clarence Ellis, the man who it was called against, was more direct, saying, I didn't touch him. And then you had the very outspoken Norm Van Brocklin, who was not afraid to tear the ref a new one after that call. He hated the call, saying it killed his team, and said we were stealing a ball game, and they took it away from us. Remember, Van Brocklin was the same coach who threatened to fight reporters after a loss, so it's not too surprising that he wasn't afraid to speak his mind here. You can learn more about that incident by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Obviously, Lions head coach Joe Schmidt thought that the call was correct, saying they interfered. That's what the man called. He wouldn't have called it if it wasn't interference. But based on every angle that I've seen, this looked like the Falcons were robbed. Obviously, this play has been forgotten in NFL history, and there's a few reasons for that. Number one, it was a regular season game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. I'm not sure how many people were watching that one. Plus, there's so many regular season games in a season that in the near half century that this game has been played, I'm not sure how many people remember this one vividly. If you did happen to watch this game and remember the play, then leave a comment down below. Number two, this play ultimately had no bearing on the season. The Falcons finished the year with a 7-7 record, missing the postseason. Had the Falcons won this game, they would have been 8-6 which still would not have been good enough for them to get into the postseason, as they would still be behind the San Francisco 49ers for the NFC West crown. The Lions finished the season with a record of 8-5-1, and, and missed the postseason anyways, so a loss here wouldn't change that. At number three, this was not even close to the most controversial play from that season. The most controversial referee decision from 1972 is still being talked about to this day, as two months later, we would see the Immaculate Reception, which lives on in NFL history. And even if we exclude the postseason, you still have this awful call from the Packers-Raiders game on this record-breaking Jack Tana bubble return, which should not have counted, since at the time, a muffed lateral could not be advanced, and at no point whatsoever did MacArthur Lane have possession of this football. So it's no surprise as to why this pass interference call sort of fell by the wayside. What's crazy is that this might not even be the most controversial ending to a Falcons-Lions game ever. Three years ago, you had a highly controversial ending with a 10 second runoff after the referees got the call wrong. That one went in favor of the Falcons, so I guess you can say everything in this series evened out 45 years later. As for this call in 1972, there is no other way to say it. It was bad. And while one call doesn't necessarily win or lose a game, in the case of the Falcons on this October day, it definitely didn't help their cause. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this going to sound to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarrogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated, so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.